We're gonna bring you your daily solutions. We're gonna bring you your daily solutions. We're gonna bring you your daily solutions. This is the podcast. <laughs> All right, welcome everybody. Hey everybody, Graham here. My name is Ash Khan. And today's question for you is... Get it. What makes an inviting lobby for a float center? What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chairs? <laughs> I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna toss that out. Yeah, um, roof, great idea. <laughs> I know we all used to think you didn't need roofs, but... Okay, so lobbies, I think lobbies can be important because it's not just about like where people are hanging out before their appointments, but it's often where people are hanging out after their floats. Sometimes for hours. You know, drinking tea, hanging out, enjoying themselves. It's almost like I almost view our lobby as kind of a like in between world between <laughs> between <laughs> the, the, like the float tank and like the outside world, like the nice form of purgatory. Yeah, <laughs> where you don't have to stay; you can leave whenever you want. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you. It's like you're not. You come out of your float. You're not quite ready to go out into the world again, especially for us, like in a city, where like once you do step back out into the street, you're like, you know, you're in a city again. It's a uh, I think it's nice to have like an inviting and warm lobby in a place that people could hang out if they want to and kind of an interesting place to to look at and be and ideally it's comfortable is another big one, right? Like <laughs> that was, I think we covered that with the roof <laughs> portion of this conversation, you know. And chairs. That, that pretty much covers <laughs> comfort. Uh so, you know, without going into too much uh detail about it, I, like like Ashcon said, it is worth noting that, you know, a lobby is a place where you hang out before and potentially after. Sometimes that's divided up into pre-float and post-float lounge right. kind of areas. And I'm th- assuming this, everything we're saying is kind of true for both scenarios. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for the sake of this conversation, let's just say those are all one one yeah. environment. Basically non-float like your non-float tank. room areas where the public hangs out. Right. That's not the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, you should have a warm and inviting bathroom too, you know? So you, you take back that. I take it back. Okay. I take so it back. So bathroom is included in all of this too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the comfy roof, chairs, the roof. The roof thing applies. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's start at the beginning, which is <laughs> nice check. Like as they walk in the door, easy, easy to access check-in area. That's very clear, kind of what's going on. Like I, I've gone into not necessarily float centers, but different smaller wellness practices. And even walking in the door, I'm not actually sure what is going on or where I'm supposed to go. And it's you know the the person who's supposed to be there greeting me ducked off to the restroom or whatever, and there's uh-huh. not an obvious thing or place that I'm supposed to walk up to, to to get attended to, you know, which is fine. I mean, ultimately, you're in that building. You'll, they'll figure out what to do. But <laughs> um, in our case, you know, you walk in and, and our weird kind of kelpy front desk area is right there. And it's very obvious who you're supposed to talk to, where you're going, who's working there, that kind of thing. Uh, we also, you know, because our staff is running around so much, uh, just in that little intro area, there are some things that are nice. Like we have a little buzzer that will buzz either a, a thing that's attached to our staff or do a little ding in the back room so that if no one's there, they can get help. A little sign that says, hey, we might be running around like crazy cleaning rooms. Uh-huh. Actually, it doesn't say that. It says we might be very calmly and meticulously cleaning rooms. <laughs> it doesn't right? say that either. It says <laughs> we'll be back in five minutes or something. <laughs> um, right, but a little si- sign that basically explains, hey, you can you can sit down. You know, don't don't wait for us. This is all normal. <laughs> Everything's fine here. Just move along. <laughs> um, so, yeah, most, most float centers have tea, something something like that. I've seen some float centers go as far as oxygen bars, massage mm-hmm. chairs, you know, all kombucha sorts of on other, tap. Kombucha on tap is what we have as well. Uh, so, you know, you're kind of, a lot of people try to add to that experience. You're coming into float. You're trying to make it a nice, relaxing experience. Here's some extras to kind of accompany the the nice, warm, relaxy feeling you get from from getting out of the float tank. And also, like, just, I know we've talked about chairs a lot already, but I really think it's nice to go for, like, seriously, like, plush, comfy sort of furniture. Uh, like, we, we have big, cushy couches and stuff like that, and you see people come out of their float, and they're, like, you know, slumped over, almost like they're in their own living room, <laughs> which is, that's, like, my goal. Like, the more our lobby feels like a living room, kind of, the more the more I like it. Yep, so definitely comfy. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're so tactile and, and your senses are so engaged, especially yeah. getting out of a float. The idea of having even slightly uncomfortable or, or awkward-shaped furniture just sounds so unpleasant. 
<laughs> and you know, from there you can go to all sorts of crazy places. We've for a long time wanted like a giant jellyfish aquarium. But uh, it turns out those are like twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, and we don't trust our staff to just not immediately kill all the jellyfish. Yeah, jellyfish are really hard. Not to like take spider care of. hunting. Just you know, it's it's hard to take care of. There, yeah. So we never really we never really pulled that one off. <laughs> but uh, I've seen a I've seen a float center that had like a sweet fireplace with like seating on both sides of it as part of their lobby, which was awesome. And I bet in like winter months was a really really great place to sit after you floated. Anything that's kind of really interesting to look at. I think it's really nice after a float. Yep, art would go in that category. Yep. We have a rotating art gallery, for example, that yeah. uh, I really enjoy. As, as far as inviting, too, I guess there's inviting to your customers, and there's also inviting in the sense that someone walking by might actually want to come in to find out what the heck you're you're doing in there, you uh-huh. know? And our art gallery has definitely been great for that. Like people wander by, and they actually assume that we're an art gallery. And come in, they're like, oh, these paintings are great. Wait, what? <laughs> where am I? What am I doing here? <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so so art is great for that. Plants. Plants. I'd put in that same fun-to-look-at, decorative kind of category. Yeah. Also in that same need-to-take-care-of-it-like-jellyfish kind of category, <laughs> so make sure that you have a watering schedule for... They don't move around as much as fire or jellyfish, <laughs> so they're not quite as interesting to look at, but they, they provide a nice atmosphere, I think. Yeah, yeah. Get the really mobile plants, too, you know? Uh, I mean, we've seen some float centers that have like a looping video going in their lobby, something like that, whether it's just kind of, you know, beautiful nature documentary sort of shots. Um, I've seen some float centers like looping the Float Nation documentary uh-huh. on like yep. a TV in their lobby. Uh, so, you know, there's there's kind of all sorts of various iterations of, of something like that that I've seen people do. That one's an interesting one for me personally, too, um, having just any kind of video or screen in there. Like, I think it can be really nice and, you know, especially something like Planet Earth or, or something showing that like that. I, I can imagine watching that post float and, and really enjoying it. Yeah. But then another part of me kind of doesn't want to expose people to screens right. either before or after the float. Like, I, it's like the float purist part of me it just doesn't like even if it's Planet Earth and it's beautiful, I, I just sort of don't want to engage that part of the brain or something. Yeah. We just hire live actors to to record all of our kind of nature documentaries, and then they perform it in front of people after their floats. It's expensive, but I think in the end, people really appreciate it's it. It's worth it, yeah. <laughs> kind of like roofs, same category, expensive, but worth it. All right, so, so yeah, some some cool videos. Um, mimes. <laughs> all right, here's a question. What about, so I know we already talked about all the lobby space kind of being the same, but what about there are some float centers out there where you go in, they, they have a much more decked out kind of post-float lounge. Mm-hmm. But the initial space that you walk into is a very, like, usually small, uh, usually not as comfortable sort of front desk space. Like, you go in, there's mm-hmm. just a few chairs along a wall, almost kind of like a chic doctor's office or something is, is sometimes the impression I get from from this sort of setup. And you're really only in that space for a few minutes as you get checked in and then taken back into the float room and the, like, maybe, like, the area where you undress or stuff like that. Yep. Wait, was there a question in there? Yeah, oh, the question yeah. was, what do I think yeah, about that? Yeah, what do you that? think about that? Um, yeah, I think that it is a great way to save space, uh-huh. right? Like, if there's any part of the float experience that's more important, it's what happens when once you get It's like everything out, after that. Right, yeah, and that's that's by far the part that's worth doubling down on. And a lot of those places I've gone in that have the much smaller front lobby, you know, even, like, not big cushy chairs, but just little, you know, metal frame kind of chairs right. or, or something. Classy, but not as not as cushy. <laughs> like I, I don't think that it's they're, they're doing that because they had all this extra square footage, and they're like, I specifically want the aesthetic of a really small front room and a really <laughs> big back room. You know, it's like they have to compromise somewhere. Right. And what they've decided is that the least important part is what happens in that five minutes when you first come in and then get led to your float room and all the magic after is is what they want to double down on. Yeah, so, which I'd say is true. That's that's yeah. definitely like where you would prioritize. So and I often think it, these places have really sweet post-float lounges. Yeah. That's what I found. I can think of one where they, they actually specifically did, <laughs> like, one place that wanted that aesthetic of you come in, you don't even realize that it's going to be any different, you know? It's <laughs> like it looks very gray and kind of drab, yeah. and, and it was almost designed to be that way. And then the post-float lounge opens up to a big forest view yeah. in the back. It's gigantic, <laughs> huge, cushy couches. Like, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so again, you can do that little uh, the the bait and switch with your <laughs> with your uh, with your customers, which is hilarious. Uh, so what else? There's uh, obviously all the little accessories that we've talked about a lot of times. A post float journal, 
is an awesome thing to have. I like uh-huh. having crayons yeah. around for it specifically so people don't feel like they, they have to write technically or draw technically. It's like, no, color some things or just write the word love, you know, with a bunch of hearts around it or yeah. whatever you want to do with crayons is nice. Uh, adjustable lighting. Especially, yeah. you know, your, most float centers are open for long hours, you know, morning till usually pretty late at night. So being able to make the the lights kind of nice in the evening, especially for people coming out of their floats when they're more sensitive to light and they don't necessarily want to come right back out into a really bright, well-lit lobby or something. So having the ability to adjust lights is great. Yeah, 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 definitely. And... I, I like. I guess there's some. This gets beyond decorations, but there's something about just the conversational tone of the lobby too that can make it more or less yeah. inviting. Um, it's it's one of the reasons that I actually kind of like having the same pre and post float lounge. Like I like when people are coming in to to float, and there's already people who just got out of the float whose hair is wet and they're kind of like there <laughs> and spacey, and it feels like you're immediately walking into this just float environment, you know, based on the people around and the decor and everything else and. Uh, yeah, I think there is something to that uh, that ambiance. I mean, it's also why people train their staff, right, to be a little more, uh, you know, there's like the classic spa voice or something like that in more traditional spas. But at your individual center, you'll also have a certain personality that you want your business to take, and your staff kind of have to represent that. So, again, kind of intangibly, there's just a social atmosphere or a, a people-based atmosphere that I think can be really inviting as Definitely. well. I, I actually think that's one of the most important and like you know it, impactful ways you can set up your lobby is focused around that, that kind of social interaction and, and I think there's two parts to it like we've noticed that in in our lobby we have some seating that's a lot closer to our, our kind of front desks and some seating that's a lot further away and that people will tend to gravitate to their seats based on whether they really want to talk to you or yeah. they want they have nothing they don't want to talk to anybody and like when people come sit really close to the front desk, they really they usually really want to chat about their float and their experience and what it was like and what they're thinking and that sort of stuff. And when people go to like the far back corner of our lobby and sit in like the furthest chair away, they're the ones that often just want to like process and don't necessarily want to start engaging in speaking or social interactions again or something like that. So that it's nice to have to, the ability to accommodate both. And it's a nice kind of small clue for your staff when you can accommodate both of, of kind of different ways you can approach those different people. It's like your first clue as to whether you should, you know, really engage someone in conversation or maybe kind of just let someone be. Yep. And and another one that's uh, a point that we, we always like to drill home to is just having it be clean, organized, look really nice, you know, uh, as, as unfair as it is, people will be judging the quality of your water and the quality of your float tanks and everything else just by the physical appearance and like whether shelves are dusty and, and things like that in your lobby. So making sure whatever you put together is, is well-designed, kept clean, organized, that'll just bode well for people's impression on the rest of, of what you do. And, and in fact, the more important part of what you do, which is the floats. Yeah, the other the other thing I found to be really nice is in terms of seating and conversation again is having the uh, almost like little circles or, or little like bubbles of seating areas if mm-hmm. possible. Yeah, is in my mind great. Like there there are just times that two people come in together, maybe three people come in together, and if they have like their own little section of the lobby for them to sit and chat and just like discuss their experiences with each other without being too close to be really overheard by other people or stuff like that, then those people will often hang out for like 30, 45 minutes, drink tea, chat about their floats. Like it really seems to add something nice onto their experience if you can accommodate that. So having, giving people like little areas to kind of commingle amongst the groups that they came in, uh, if you have the space and, and you're able to do that in your lobby, I think is an awesome thing to aim for. And I'm so jealous of centers that have a little more lobby space where they can do that uh, even better. Even though we kind of have little designated spaces, they're all within two feet of each other yeah. or something just yeah, because we like have to... right next to where everyone's getting tea. Or... Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we still manage to do it even with a really small lobby. But yeah, I, I am jealous of places that have twice as much lobby space as we do and mm-hmm. can actually have a more kind of public area and then also, you know, three or four little private nooks where it actually feels like anyone could go and have a private conversation and... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, Different seating can be nice, too, again, if you have room for it. You know, having places that have pillows on the ground that you can sit on with kind of lower tables versus couches and things like that. And, uh, you know, even some standing room might be nice if you can can actually afford the real estate. It was my dream when we first opened to hang hammocks in front of our windows. And then people could just, like, lie in the hammocks. 
you know? <laughs> and then I thought people would be walking by being like, what is this business of people like sleeping in hammocks in front of it? <laughs> and they'd come in and they'd all float and we'd be millionaires. That was kind of my, that was my master plan at first. And none of that happened. I know, I know. <laughs> we never really got the hooks for the hammocks, so it kind of all, it all fell apart there. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about a couple things we don't do that other places do. Uh, one of which is play music, uh-huh. uh, either outside the space or inside, uh, the, the actual lobby area and things like also, I guess, incense, um, or anything like that. I, I, I put these in the same sort of category, which is, uh, things that are going on in the atmosphere that you can't turn off if you don't enjoy them. And for us, like music or even sound, it's, you know, I'm sure that we could choose things that are really pleasant and, and generally uh, non-offensive and that, that almost everyone, you know, is not going to raise a fuss about or anything. But there's this worry that we're pre-priming people for a float or that by playing certain music, they have an idea of what their float should be or, or who we are as people or even what their experience needs to be. Or and, even afterwards, people are, yeah. may not want to listen to that stuff or just kind of overly, not overly, but like their, their senses are all heightened and can be over, especially sensitive, yeah. extra sensitive. <laughs> um, and same for, uh, I would say, especially incense. People actually have really, uh, you know, some people uh, have strong reactions to uh, fumes in the air and to scents, even when they're, they're normally really pleasant. Uh, so that one, uh, I think, is one consciously that I would strongly, you know, consider not doing if, uh, if that's something you, you like. Um, and again, it works fine for, for some places. Music is a lot less offensive, but again, you can't turn it off. Like, if you have a painting that someone doesn't like, they don't need to look at the painting, and they can do something else, right? And music kind of permeates the air in a way that you can't uh, actively avoid it if you're in a space. So, again, uh, that's just kind of our float-on decisions, but that's why we personally don't offer music or, or do incense or, again, as much as we can, anything that's there in an omnipresent kind of way. I recommend bright yellow walls. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like orange and blue stretch fabric, maybe. Yeah. People really seem to enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's not usually the direction you see float centers <laughs> go, but our lobby is very vibrant. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, that's that's about it. It's Honestly, if you, if you go into your lobby when you're designing it, or if you're just even uh, working on paper and trying to figure out how to lay out your lobby or, or relay it out if it exists, float first. You know, like definitely be designing this when you're in a floaty state of mind. Not only do good ideas come from there, but I think that putting yourself in that that frame of reference will really help you think about this a lot better, not as a, a business owner, but as someone who's actually coming through the doors and, and being in that state and what you'd want to interact with. Cool. Okay. Well, if you guys have other questions out there, you can always hop over to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast and type them in. Thanks, everyone. Right. Right.